Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where we are back on Hote Baileron trying to get Mr. Swede's farm up and running so that he can supply his restaurants and build a new one right here in this lovely French village. Now he's trusted me to to get this farm working. I, I, I pretty much have free reign you know he's he's not nickel and diming me to death and I'm sure he would throw additional money into this if he felt it was necessary and of course I would have to explain to him why because that's you know employers always want to know why they're spending extra money when they feel like they spent quite a bit already that's what they do <laughs> and I suppose they're entitled to feel that way I'm sure I would if I were in his shoes so that's what I'm doing I got I got my wheat planted those two fields are complete ready to grow although there's a bunch of freaking weeds growing on them and those have got to get taken care of ASAP but I also have to today. I guess I don't have to, but I really, really would prefer to um, yeah, get that third field planted. I've got a plan for that field, and I think it's really going to help our cash flow issues. But the first thing I'm going to start off with today is swapping out some equipment. Because this big bloody fertilizer spreader, which is... It's a fantastic fertilizer spreader, but our fields don't need anything quite that big. It gets a little unwieldy, so I think I've found something that will set me up better. Plus, this thing is worth 42,000, almost 43,000 euros. So, I'm selling that bad boy off. That's right. You heard me. That's 40 grand in my pocket. I'm not going to be able to keep it, because I'm going to pick up two other pieces of equipment right now that are going to do wonders for our little farm. Anything on sale today? Uh, nothing that's going to help us out dramatically. That's a bummer too because, man, 615 horsepower, but that's a bargain for that big cultivator right there. Hmm. I don't have anything I, that would pull it. Not even my trusty Fent would pull that thing. Okay, let's get on with this, shall we? I need to go back to fertilizer spreaders because I do need one. It's going to be one of the key pieces of equipment on the farm. But one of these small ones down here, this Bridal. It's only 28,000, holds 4,000 liters, has a 42 meter spread, and does lime and fertilizer. That's my baby. Right there. I want it. Um, we'll go with the steel color, the metal color. I kind of like that. And buy that bad boy. We're not leasing anything. We're, we're buying. At least not today. And then I need... Now you saw me using that roller the other day. That was this big Dalbo, 41,000. I found one I like better. It's this Mayor. It's smaller. It runs 8.5 meters, 8.2. But this has a dual purpose to it, and I'll explain that to you later. But I'm buying that bad boy up too. Look at that. Two pieces of equipment I got for trading in that fertilizer spreader. And I replaced that piece of equipment at the same time. That's a bargain. That is a bargain for me. So, got to run this stuff back over to the farm. I'll probably leave the roller here for now and just uh, take the fertilizer spreader over. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Leave the roller. I'll come and get it when I'm ready to use it, which isn't going to be long. But first, I've got a weed problem I need to take care of. I did get my wheat fields planted, as I said, but man, the weeds have come up in a fury. An absolute fury. And those have got to get taken out. And they're not the good, fun kind of weeds. They're the nasty, gonna strangle and kill my crops kind of weeds. We're not having it. Oh no. I work, I work two really long days. Although technically you can say I worked two really long months to get these fields in the position that they're in right now in time for winter. I'm not going to have that ruined by a bunch of cruddy weeds. Luckily, we have our handy dandy weeder here. It's a bit small, but it's a dual purpose small, so that makes it a little more, uh, a little more acceptable, if you will. In fact, I'm just going to stay in this tractor. I find the Fent, believe it or not, the Fent is almost too big sometimes. 
I mean, we're you know we're getting a, a small start here. There's there's nothing dramatic about how we're getting started off. And don't get me wrong, I love my fence, the fence of my baby. It's uh not exactly great, especially on the the tight the trees down at the end here, man. Make it pretty rough. Uh, yeah, drop it hard. That's brilliant. Just lower it to the ground and drive, fool. <laughs> oh, man. If you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? Yeah, this is doing a bang-up job. You can kind of, you can almost see those weeds in there. Yeah, you can see them. You don't see them anymore, though, once this thing rolls by. Excellent. Yeah, it's raking them right out of the ground. That's exactly what we need. Now, there, there are numerous ways that I could do this. Um, I mean, I could use a much bigger weeder, of course. I could use herbicide and spray these fields. Unfortunately, based on what I've been testing or had opportunity to test so far, uh, unlike FS19, I have had no success in preemptively spraying for weeds. So in FS19, and, and I never wanted to be one of the guys that compares 19 to 22, but it's the only way I can explain my example. In 19, um, you could plant your field and then spray it with herbicide and weeds would never come up. You could stop them from growing at all. Well, that that does not work here, at least not yet. So, we'll see. We'll see. Well, Mr. Kuntz showed up. He told me he was going to be running a little bit late today, and he showed up. So I asked him to go ahead and and weed those fields for me. He's on that job right now. So I came back over to get this roller. Now, if you recall, I got stones collect, or I got plowed stones collected. Did I lime? Uh, yeah, I lime. I think I lime that. Did I lime that field? I don't know. Did I? I better check and make sure. Because I really want to get this field, and this is going to be pretty primo money maker. Let me look at my fields real quick. That's not my fields. Those are my fields. Oh, no, I did not get lime on this bad boy, so I better do that first. And then I can roll it. Yeah, give me a chance to try out the new lime spreader. Give me a chance to spend more money on lime. Absolutely. Come on, brother. <laughs> I guess I could have grabbed a smaller tractor. I don't care. You know, the fence getting old. I'm probably going to have to send it in at some point for a, uh, a restoration, a revamp of something or other because it's really starting to cost a lot of money. It's got 80 hours on it at this point. Almost 81. And, uh, there we go. It's wearing out quickly. And I haven't used it that much since I got here. I've used it some, but not that much. Now this thing has a really wide spread on it, so I'm going to start right down the middle. About like so. And we're going to fire up the old fence GPS. That, my friends, is a hardy line. A very hardy line. All right. Hmm, that's going to end up being pretty wasteful. Okay, since I got GPS, I don't have to start in the middle. I can I can shift over quite a bit and reset my line. So let me try that. It's almost like I've never used GPS before, right? That's still not enough. Holy cow, I was way off. <laughs> I will get there eventually. That that ought to be about right, right? 
Alright, that'll do. That will do. Let's roll and see what this bad boy does. Oh yeah, look at that. I told you there was a reason. Small, portable, and incredibly wide. And before I get asked, yes, you can get this on the Mod Hub. This might cover this whole field in two little dinky... No, not quite. Not quite. Not going to take much, though. Not going to take much. Man, I wish I would have had this thing before. <laughs> this is making a big difference. Look at that go. Just look at it go. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Now the question is, can I line up in such a way that I can utilize the last of the lime I've got in this bad boy? without wasting a whole bunch. Let's see what I can do. Go, 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 go. Nah, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to go get the last of what's in the silo. Darn it, Bobby. Oh, look at that. Got it done with 51 liters to spare. And you know what? I don't want to fiddle around with 51 liters. And I see a little spot that looks like it might have got missed. <laughs> I burned it before I even got to that spot. All right. That's okay. But what I can do now is load this up with fertilizer and have it ready to go. Because I know I'm going to need that again today. So let's get that done. No, not lime. Oh, I don't even have that much fertilizer. That's okay. That's probably enough to get that field done. Mr. Koontz, why are you just sitting there parking like a fool? I'm just... No, I'm not going to do that because it's going to be in my way. Harv? You're all over the place today, man. Focus. Focus. Okay, now we can roll. Now, like I said, this roller is smaller. It's not going to get the job done quite as fast as uh, that big one did. And as you can see, it's it's kind of tiny. But this is a multi-purpose roller. It's going to serve me many times, not just for rolling uh, when planting. It's actually going to help me uh, keep my grass fields in good shape. And if you haven't figured it out yet, that's exactly what this field is going to be. Grass. Grass for everyone. Alright. And I definitely want GPS action for this one. Oh, good. It's already set and ready to go. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Now, under this... <laughs> lime this is uh, or should be and let me double check that too I want to be sure that I'm not talking out of school yeah so it's preparing a seed bed getting our field absolutely ready to accept seed and have the best chance of uh, best chance of growing a good solid crop here And, uh, sorry, Mr. Corn. I know I shouldn't be, but I am Mr. Corn. <laughs> anyway, while we're doing this, we might as well start, to, we might as well start talking about some France, huh? Interesting thing. Well, France is an interesting country, a very, very, very long history. 
obviously a very old country been around for a long long time I mean we've all heard surely we've all heard of Napoleon right you've heard of Napoleon right I mean he was he was quite a quite a few hundred years ago um, but not just that you know there there are many 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 things about uh, France that you may or may not know here's an interesting one did you know that in France it's perfectly legal to marry a dead person yeah that that gives a whole new meaning to the film the sixth sense and uh, seeing dead people no really if you can prove if you can prove that the deceased was planning to marry you and um, I'm no that's not my lane Harv what what part of focus did you not understand Harv seriously bro if you can prove that the deceased was planning to marry you before they they uh, died you can legally marry them in France France has no problem with saying they're dead who cares go ahead marry him yeah interesting very very interesting how many of you love movies anybody who's paid attention to Harv for a while knows how much Harv loves movies well the first movie ever was screened in France yes it was it was screened in France the Lumiere brothers you know, Luminance, Lumiere. Yeah, they really were named Lumiere, though. They, uh, they showed the first movie ever in the history of the world in France. And interestingly enough, one of the Lumiere brothers said that uh, it was an art form without a future. He, he could not see <laughs> the fact that we would be spending billions of dollars a year to go to the movies and be entertained. In the immortal words of Maximus, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? What else can we... I mean, we're just going to learn some interesting facts um, about France in general. The oldest living person, the oldest person that ever lived in the history of the world, at least the recorded history of the world, came from France. She lived to 122 and a half years old. Her name was Jean Louise Calment. Calment. 122 and a half. Can you imagine? I mean, even at my age, I'm starting to feel like uh, <laughs> life is long. But then again, at my age, I'm also thinking, man, life is so short. Time flies. But I can't imagine living to 122. I hope it was a good 122, though. I, I suppose you don't live to 122 unless you're, like, very healthy and have all of your faculties and all that. You know, it would kind of stink to live to 122, but, uh, you know, be in poor health that whole time. Yeah, that would be kind of awful, right? I don't want any part of it, but that's just me. I'm picky that way. Now, we haven't, we haven't been yet. It hasn't been part of the world tour yet. But, you know, we the Alps, everybody associates the Alps with Switzerland. Can I make this swing around here? Oh, yeah. The fence all, on it, all over it. On it like a car bonnet. There we go. Perfect. We associate the Alps with, the, with Switzerland, obviously. I think everybody's uh, at least rudimentarily familiar with that. Well, the highest mountain in Europe is Mont Blanc and that's that's in the French Alps it's not in Switzerland France said you know Switzerland you can have your chocolate we're gonna take the the mountain peak or something 
<laughs> Probably the or something. Harv talking like a fool. Anyway, yeah, the, the highest mountain peak in Europe is in France, Mont Blanc. Of course, uh, surely everyone's heard of the Louvre. L-O-U-V-R-E, the Louvre Museum. It's the most popular, most visited museum in the world. Somebody parked a barn in my way. That might not be the best place for that barn. We, we might have to find a better place for that. Or run this field in a different direction. Holy shnikes, Batman, that's tight. I'm going to run down to this end real quick. I've kind of lost track of where I've been and where I haven't now. Learning too much about France. Mr. Koontz out there is uh, going to town on those weeds. That's good because I'm going to need that weeder for this field here in just a little bit. I'm glad he's not wasting any time. Although it's... Man, how did it get to be noon already? It is what it is. Alright, where's my next lane here? I have to check my map just to see. Oh, I've only got two passes left to do. Very nice, very nice indeed. Eh, it should be just about this one. If not, I'll sort it out. All over the place, just squirrely like crazy. Of course, everybody knows that uh, France is famous for wine. Absolutely famous for wine. And uh, the most expensive bottle of wine ever produced was produced in France and brought in a whopping $558,000. That bloody wine better taste really freaking good for that amount of money, let me tell you. Watch, I probably, I did. I totally, <laughs> I totally, I'm all over the place, man. Somebody help me. <laughs> anyway. $558,000 for one bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, one bottle of wine. It was uh, bottled in 1945. And it only took 73 years for it to get to that ripe old age and uh, be worth that kind of, uh, that kind of cash. 73 years. But... You know, hopefully, you know, somebody gave you a bottle of wine as a baby. You held on to it the whole time. You didn't drink it. And, uh, you know, you, you could have a nice little retirement there. At least most of the way to retirement. Absolutely. Alright, just a dab more and I'll have the fertilizer on this also. So we've got a good seed bed. We've got our first uh, application of fertilizer. Mr. Koontz has finished up weeding our oat fields. What's the fertilizer looking like over there these days? Oh, they need an application of fertilizer too. Okay, it's going to be fertilizer day, that's for sure. But first, first, I am going to get this field planted. I don't need to do that. I'm just going to shut this bad boy down. Since I don't really have that much left to do today, I think, uh, well, I know. I just cut Mr. Koontz loose and, and told him to have the afternoon off. I'm sure he appreciates that. It's not like farm workers get paid poorly, you know. I wish he'd put his equipment away when he was done, though. I have to talk to him about that. <laughs> now, the nice thing about this weeder, I've got to tell you, is that it's also a seeder for small things, little things. I could plant canola, I can plant grass, and I can plant oilseed radish. 
today we're planting grass. I'm probably going to have to fill it up umpteen bajillion times. And targeting the fill is a bit of a challenge. Yeah, it's only it only holds 300 liters at a time. That's okay. That's okay. I'll take it. And I think I've learned my lesson about that barn down there. I'm at least going to put a couple of headlands in here. There we go. Turn the cedar on, drop that bad boy down, and let's rock this field. That's not going through grass seed too quick. Nah, not bad at all, actually. Might actually be able to... Well, I'm not going to say that yet. It's not like it's using no seed. It's just using just no... I missed a row of rocks, too. Darn it. That'll be alright. That'll be alright. No worries. This little vulture's not a bad tractor. It's not my favoriteest, but it's not bad. Drop that thing down. So this is one of the things I like about this weeder, is that it's multi-use. If I wanted to plant canola, I could plant canola. If I need to plant grass, I can plant grass. I like tools that do more than one thing. As I'm sure you understand. Okay, that's some good headland right there, so I think we're safe to rock this field north to south now. Yeah, that's doing a good job. Really good job. So, if you're a fan of April F Fool's Day, and you like to play pranks on folks, or enjoy uh, seeing the, the pranks that other people play on folks, you might enjoy going to France, because they kind of get a kick out of April Fool's Day. And what I mean by that is, no, they don't put a kick me sign on your back. Although they do put something on your back, interestingly enough. Um, you might end up with a fish taped to your back. I hope that's not a real fish. That could get really smelly in a hurry, no. I'm sure, like, it just... Harv? Hitting the wrong switches, pushing the wrong buttons, driving like a maniac. Um... On April Fool's Day, it's, it's a French tradition to tape a fish on your back. So, if you're ever in France on April 1st, and you have a fish on your back, that would be why. At some historical 16th century Charles the whatever's... <laughs> something happened, he uh, changed the calendar or something, and uh, people got annoyed or... Wanted to celebrate it, or who knows? People do things for the weirdest reasons. I'm sure somebody out there will tell me exactly what it, why it was. I just don't remember the specifics at the moment. I'm too worried about my grass. Now, here's one that will either uh, make you turn your nose up and get real squeamish, or will go, yum! In France, they eat about 30,000 tons of snails a year. 30,000 tons. Can you imagine 30,000 tons of snails? Yeah, see, I'm, I'm halfway through the grass seed I had in this already, so I probably will have to fill up again. And you know, I feel like I missed the tiniest little strip right through here, so I'm going to run this pass down one more time. Yeah, 30,000 tons of snails a year. 
It's a it's a bloody French delicacy, I'm telling you. They love that crap. I've seen snails. I've accidentally stepped on snails before. They're kind of slimy and, and gross and disgusting. And uh, I don't really want to put them in my mouth. But, you know, France, if that's your bag, please, by all means. By all means, enjoy your snails. And you can have mine, too. Although... <laughs> Um, when it comes to snail, the French apparently are very picky about their snails because um, if you're on a high, if you're getting on a high-speed train, and if you just happen to have a live snail with you, or two, or three, or ten, now I'm not talking about they're already cooked. I'm talking about maybe you're taking them home to uh, cook them. You just want them real fresh or something. I don't know. But if you take, if you're riding a high-speed train to get home with these snails, each of those snails has to have its own ticket to ride the train. Literally, each one of those snails must have a ticket to ride the high-speed train. And I and I guess they consider snails an animal because any domestic animal under five kilograms has to have its own ticket. So, I don't... Is, is a snail an animal? It's a mollusk, right? Is a mollusk an animal, or is it a fish, or is... I don't know. This isn't Science 101. This is uh, the world tour, and we're just trying to learn a little bit about our French neighbors. Although I grew up in a town that was named after a French general. The Marquis de Lafayette. And that town was Lafayette, Indiana, not... Not to be confused with Lafayette, Louisiana, which everybody seems to know. But anyway, when it comes to train stations, apparently the French have a few interesting laws because um, it's against the law to kiss on a, on a train station platform if the train is in the station. As long as there's no train sitting there, you're good. You can make out all you want. Grab your girl grab your guy, grab your significant other, whatever, and uh, get to snogging, as they say in England. <laughs> I believe that's uh, British snogging, right? Kissing. Um, once that train's, train pulls in, or you hear it coming, you got to knock that crap off because the French aren't having it. And apparently that's a law dating back to like 1910, and it, it was a way to uh, try to speed up or keep the trains on time. It's, uh, it's interesting. Don't, I mean, you know, in the U.S. we don't use trains that much. I mean, maybe back in the day we used to, you know, the 1800s and such, when that was the primary mode of transportation. But... Nope. Yeah. Viva la France, right? Speaking of transportation, I'm sure you've all heard of the Tour de France. Tour de France bike race. That thing is over a hundred years old now. And the only thing I can think of is, is you know those bikes, those those early bicycles? They have, a, they have an actual name for them. I can't remember what it is right now. But they had those giant wheels on the front. They're like six feet tall. And then the back wheel is just like a little normal size wheel. It would be hilarious if the first Tour de France was using those kind of bicycles. That would be pretty classic. That I would like to see. But if you're into bike racing, yeah, that, that race, and it's probably the, you know, if, if you said name a bike race, more people would say Tour de France than just about anything else. Okay, the grass is done. The grass is in. So I'm thinking at this point, I probably better get the fertilizer... On. I should be able to get a second application of fertilizer right on this grass field without any trouble. I do need to roll it one more time. Just just make sure that that gets, you know, those seeds get in the ground just right the way they're supposed to. 
But I'm going to need to go buy more fertilizer. That's an expensive proposition. I'm going to have to find a way to make some extra money here, too. Because we're down to 60000 I'm sure I can find some jobs to do here and there. So France and food, because we were talking about food earlier. Cheese. France is real serious about their cheese now. 1,600 types of cheese France produces. It's 1,600 different types of cheese. Um, maybe I should do like a whole... Let's, let's list all of the French cheeses. No, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that at all. That sounds about as much fun as a root canal. And if you've never had a root canal, I genuinely, genuinely do not advise it. It's no fun. Yeah, we need to get some light on this. The sun's starting to go down early. It is October, after all. How did my time get bumped? No wonder time's going by so fast. I got bumped up to 15 times speed. That's not even fair. The game is cheating me out of time. That's alright. At least I can get the fertilizing done very, very quickly. Yeah, so 1,600 types of cheese, 1.7 million tons, not pounds, 1.7 million tons of cheese is produced in France each and every year. Craziness. Absolutely craziness. Although, I'm kind of okay with that because I love cheese. Cheese is my favorite food group. One of my favorite food groups. If I ever go to France, if I ever have the opportunity to go to France, I'm going to have to check out a cheese shop. And if they give out free samples, watch out. They're going to get, you know, they make fun of us Americans for being fat and lazy. They're going to find out just, just how fat we can get. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about Harvin a cheese shop that would be bad okay very very bad so many interesting facts about uh, France though it's an interesting country and there's there's so much history we're gonna go through a lot of it we're gonna find out a whole bunch about France oh yeah We aren't done yet. And the, I mean, the history alone. If we, if we wanted to talk about Napoleon, we could probably do that for a good hour or two. Okay, outstanding. Everything is fully fertilized. Now I need to roll this field one more time. So my wheat fields are in. My grass field is in. We've started to learn a little bit about France. Some interesting, quirky little facts about France. We're going to learn a whole bunch more. This is it. This is all I've got left to do. Roll this field and wait for spring to come. I might actually get to bed at a halfway decent hour tonight. That would be a nice change of pace. That hasn't happened in a couple months. But I think that's going to do it for this episode of Hope Baylor on. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. As always. I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride, and until next time, take care.